What is up? How you going? It's Ramsey and Z here. We are gonna be doing a theory video today on One Piece. Zoro's scar and how he got it. All right. So first off, I'd like to talk about Rayleigh and how he got his scar, or how I think he might have gotten his scar. There's a lot of similarities between Rayleigh and Zoro, obviously. I mean, Rayleigh being the right-hand man of Roger, Zoro, pretty much the right-hand man of Luffy. They're both swordsmen. Um, they both got scars on their eyes. <laughs> uh, also, I think Rayleigh would have aspired to be the greatest swordsman of his time, and he probably was the greatest swordsman of his time. I mean, we've seen him as an old man do some ridiculously powerful feats. Swimming the uh, the calm belt, killing a sea, dra a sea king. He fought with Admiral Kizaru, right? So, Kizaru would have been trying to capture Rayleigh. Rayleigh, we can, it's safe to assume he is a massive bounty. Um, I mean, right-hand man of the Pirate King. They were trying to kill the Pirate King's babies. Like, every tie to the Pirate King, they were trying to get rid of it, you know? So, he's a wanted man. And Kizaru, if he could have captured him, he would have. But that's just how strong Rayleigh is. So how did Rayleigh get his scar? Okay, so I believe that Mihawk, or maybe Mihawk's master, because Mihawk would have been quite young when um, when the Pirate King was alive, really. And we see that Rayleigh has his scar on his eye during the Ed War, which was 27 years ago, three years before Roger was executed. So... Mihawk is currently 43 years old, post time skip, so he would have been about 16 at the time. Yeah, and Rayleigh already has the scar, so it's hard to imagine a 16 year old Mihawk defeating Rayleigh in his prime. However, Mihawk probably had a master, right? He was probably trained by someone, he isn't just some freak of nature that just became the swordsman. So maybe Mihawk's master was actually the greatest swordsman. Or surpassed Rayleigh and then maybe Mihawk surpassed his master. Now, this would also explain why Shanks and Mihawk were such great sparring partners. I mean, Mihawk wasn't affiliated with um, the Roger Pirates as far as we know. So, how him and Shanks met and became sparring partners? <sighs> Hard to say, but it is fair to say that Shanks definitely would have aspired when he was, you know, just a, a cabin boy. He would have definitely aspired to be a swordsman that's as great as Rayleigh, right? And sparring with the apprentice of the man who beat Rayleigh, or at least was a, on an equal footing with Rayleigh. Now that'd be ideal for the both of them, really, wouldn't it? So, what I'm getting at here is, I believe that Mihawk's master would have given Rayleigh the scar on his eye, right? And this same master is a, the master that taught Mihawk all of his techniques that he uses today. And this is what would have led to Shanks and Mihawk being such great sparring partners, and being awesome rivals in a friendly way, you know? Which leads me to my second point. Mihawk and the human drills, okay? So, the human drills. They're those eight things that, <laughs> that learn techniques from watching humans. So, my, my theory is, is that if they're learning all these techniques from watching humans, then they're learning a mirrored version of those techniques. And we see this, actually, in Zoro's Tatsumaki. Zoro normally holds his swords out to the right, but these ones, the human drill that we see do the Tatsumaki does it the opposite way and holds it out to the left. Which may not seem very significant, but when you think about things like Zoro's scar being on his left eye, while Rayleigh's scar is on his right side, I mean they're very similar looking scars, you know? It could be the same technique. So what I'm thinking is, that big boss human drill that we see wielding a, a like a a white version of uh, Mihawk's Yoru sword, Yoru, whatever it is, you know, his massive big fuck off sword, that human drill will have learnt quite a lot of Mihawk's techniques and be nowhere near as strong as Mihawk, but still, he'd be a lot stronger than most swordsmen. <laughs> but the thing is, is that all of these techniques that he's using are still reflections of the technique. And during Zoro's training, probably towards the end of the training is maybe like a final challenge. Maybe that human drill used the same technique that gave Rayleigh his scar on his right eye on Zoro, meaning that Zoro's left eye was scarred. So, what would this mean for Zoro? I mean, is he going to be able to open his eye in the future? Personally, I'm going to say yes. Uh, 
Rayleigh and Shanks, both their eyes have opened after they've had some serious scarring down there. And I mean, there's enough funky shit going on with Sendai, Sendai Kiyotsu and the whole, like, Nine Swords, Asura, demon style shit. Zoro just constantly referencing demons in his attacks. You know, opening his scarred eye definitely seems like a possibility. I mean, he grew four extra arms and two extra heads. Surely he can manifest an eye that was already there and probably still is, you know? Speaking of his Asura powers, will, it, will opening his eye awaken some locked demon power? Personally, I don't think so. Oda has stated himself that everyone has preferences with Haki, you know, and Luffy's preference being Conqueror's Haki, Sanji's being Observation, and Zoro's being Armament Haki, so Mihawk seems like a pretty well-rounded guy when it comes to training and his strengths, you know, it doesn't seem like he has much weaknesses, so I'm sure he'd try and train Zoro in a similar way, and of, you know, they always say that <laughs> it's best to work at your weaknesses rather than your strengths, right? So maybe that's what it was all about. He got his left eye scarred and it forced him to work on his observation haki a whole lot more. There's also plenty of badass characters who manage just fine with one eye. Think about Kenpachi, right? He has two eyes. <laughs> he chooses not to use one. And when we first saw Kenpachi and how strong he was, you weren't thinking like, Holy crap, I wonder how strong he'd be if he had two eyes, you know? You were just thinking like, holy crap, this guy is strong. And then when he reveals that he like, actually has two eyes and he's, the eye patch was just to drain his powers so that he wouldn't kill people really easily. <laughs> You're like, holy crap, this guy is OP. And I'm kind of thinking maybe something like that might happen with Zoro, where he's just been handicapping himself to enjoy the fights a little bit more. Or to train himself. So that when he uses both eyes again, he will just be insanely strong. Regardless of whether opening his eye unlocks some OP power or not, it's gonna be epic as fuck. You can you can count on that. And you know, it's Zoro. It's fucking Zoro. <laughs> He's gonna have a manly ass moment. So far, what we've seen of Zoro post time skip is just him being stomping on absolute everyone, like the absolute trash. Totally underwater. Sure, he hadn't taken all his drugs yet like he did versus when he was versing Luffy, so it's people go on about Luffy being weaker than Zoro because of that fight, but that's not entirely fair. He was taking some some serious steroids that were really buffing the hell out of him. When he was fighting Luffy, he was a much stronger, much more durable Hody Jones than what we saw when he was fighting um, Zoro. However, Zoro still stomped him underwater, <laughs> which is impressive. And then he, you know, beheads a dragon. He takes down Monette, like, pretty much using Conqueror's Haki. If that wasn't Conqueror's Haki, I don't know what the hell is. Uh, Taking down Pika, like, he's absolutely nothing. It's just been insanity. And when we see Zoro have another, you know, Mr. One where he's pushed to the absolute limit, the brink of death, that is going to be epic. Because you know that our man Zoro is going to pull through. He's not losing a fight ever again. Hey, anyway guys, thanks heaps for watching the video. I really appreciate your time. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, let me know in the comment section if you have any ideas to expand on it. Or if you have any anything to debunk this theory. Again, I hope you enjoyed the theory. I hope it's not absolutely stupid. <laughs> and also, I hope to catch you guys around. Hey, you have a good one and I'll catch you guys later.